So let's go through an example now uh, where we're going to use uh, Laplace transforms to describe the problem. Um, we will be talking about this, this sphere where we have some generation that's a function of time. So the generation looks something like this. We have a maximum generation, which is, I guess, in this case, something like 450, or no, 1 e to the ninth uh, watts per meter squared. And uh, that generation decays with time. So as you move forward, your, your volumetric generation is dropping. Um, it looks like our decay constant is two seconds, so we kind of see a pretty substantial decrease in two seconds. And we're, our job is to model um, how the temperature of this thing uh, behaves with, with time. In order to start on the Laplace transforms, I guess we're going to start with a 0D problem, and then we'll extend it later to 1D. So we will first try to justify that we can use a 0D model here by uh, computing the BO number. So let's do that first. The BO number is going to be, uh, just generally, it is R internal over R external, or R conduction here. R conduction over R surroundings. Um, the R surroundings, I guess, we're only considering convection for this problem. Uh, we can, for whatever reason, neglect radiation. So we'll just say R convection. Um, so you've done this already, you're sort of familiar with the idea, but what we would have is our conduction is going to be a length, a conduction length over uh, K times uh, some conduction area. So we'll use the surface area as a good uh, conduction area for this. Uh, and then our resistance to the surroundings is, um, how do we want to write this? So this would be uh, 1 over the inverse of 1 over h bar times the surface area, As. So our conduction length, you remember what we want to use for that? It's going to be uh, the rule of thumb for the, the lump capacitance problems is uh, volume over surface area. If that's a good approximate conduction length. So that would be volume over uh, k times As squared times h bar times As. So the ASs cancel out. We're left with just one in the denominator. And we have, uh, all right, so there's just V, H bar, over AS times K. And if you compute that out for this problem, it turns out to be 0 0.04. So that uh, value, the BO number, it sort of tells us that the temperature drop internally is about 4 one hundredths of the temperature drop externally, which is a pretty good approximation for lump capacitance, much less than one. Depending on if you're trying to be really accurate, it might be borderline, right? But OK, so we, we will move forward in, on the assumption that it's a lump capacitance problem, which means we should probably compute the lump capacitance time constants to understand what the response to this is going to look like. Um, so that would be, let's call it tau LC is going to be heat capacitance of the object C times the surroundings resistance, which is convection only. Um, heat capacitance is mass times uh, specific heat, uh, which is uh, here we are given density, so rho times volume times C. So rho volume is mass times C over uh, H bar AS. That's the equivalent way of writing that. Um, if you compute it out for this problem, it is 1.5 seconds. So looking at our, our time scale for the volumetric generation decay, I guess 1.5 seconds is on the order of magnitude where we're probably going to expect to see some interesting behavior. Um, if it was you know, 0.15 seconds, it would just follow right along. If it was much longer, it might not do anything at all. Um, so we're, we're kind of in that sweet spot. OK, so moving on then, um, just plot it out. This is hard to see. Let me just make this shield your eyes for a second. OK, so if we had a scenario where it was 0.15, right, it's going to look something like this. It's just going to very quickly ramp up and then just decay pretty much along with the volumetric generation profile. Um, this is what we have 
in our current problem. And then this is what you'd have if it was, say, 15 seconds. So there's a pretty slow response. It doesn't really have as much of a spike as the other one is going to have. Uh, but you kind of get the sense of the characteristic response here. Okay. Let's go through now and do the actual example, right? do the, the Laplace transform and go through this process. So we're going to start with our, our uh, lump capacitance control volume, which is just the circle around the thing we're trying to model. Uh, we're including the entire body as, as part of the control volume. And that means we need to look at what is um, generating, what is changing as a function of time, and then what's coming in or leaving. So here we're only leaving, we only have uh, convection leaving this, the body, so we've drawn it just in, in one direction there. Okay, so uh, let's write out the energy balance. We have um, in plus generated equals out plus stored. We have nothing coming in. We do have generation, we do have out, and we do have stored. So this is going to be g dot is equal to what's going out, q dot convection, plus what's being stored. That would be du dt. All right, and I've written the differential as uh, ordinary differential because we only have a function of time here. There's no spatial component. So that's the general energy balance. Let's come up with terms for this. So first, uh, g dot is going to be some g dot triple prime, a volumetric um, generation, which is what we're given, times the volume, times, uh, what is it, exponential of minus t over a. Right, that's generation. So Convection over here, Q dot. Convection, that's going to be just H bar times AS times T minus T infinity. T is uh, the, whatever the temperature is at the moment in time that we're evaluating. So Q dot convection changes with time, just like uh, G dot. And then uh, DU dt, that's going to be uh, D capital U dt, that is. Density times volume times specific heat times D temperature D time. Okay, so we now can go through, add up this stuff, and we have our ordinary differen differential equation in temperature. So let's do that. We have V times G dot triple prime times exponential of minus T over A equals h bar a s t minus t infinity uh, plus rho v c d t d time. Um, what do we want to do? So to get it in standard form, remember, uh, this is a thing from the test, right? Standard form is highest uh, order derivative is alone, right? There's nothing multiplying it. Um, so we need to divide out the constants and then bring that to the left. Everything with temperature on the left, and then everything that's not with temperature on the right. So if we just write this in standard form, and we note that um, what our definition of tau is uh, rho times v times c over h bar times a s. Right, that was our lump capacitance tau lc. Tau lc. If we note that and just do the algebra, we end up with a uh, simplified equation, which is, where did that go? Uh, D temperature, D time, plus temperature over tau LC equals T infinity over tau LC plus uh, G dot triple prime over rho C times exponential of minus t over a. All right, just rearranging stuff there. Uh, we also need to keep track of what our initial condition is. Right? This is uh, we only have one boundary condition for the, this problem in time. So keeping track of the initial condition, what is the initial condition for this? I guess let's look back. What was that? 
Um, we just said here uh, t initial is t infinity. Okay, so t initial equals t infinity, which is t at time equals zero. Okay, so this is this is the statement, the mathematical statement of our problem. This is exactly the same thing we would have done, right? For any of the techniques, you always have to get it to this point. We're always getting the ODE in temperature based on stuff that's conserved in heat. We always go from heat to temperature, and that's the relationship. So now we can go through and actually apply the Laplace methodology to this expression. Any questions before we move on? <coughs> 